Good morning, y'all. My name is Will Scharf. I'm one of President Trump's attorneys. Today we presented oral argument before the United States Court of Appeals for the Second Circuit in one of two cases brought against President Trump by E. Jean Carroll. Now, it's really important to remember that E. Jean Carroll's story at its heart is an utterly implausible he said, she said story. There is no corroboration for anything she has ever claimed about President Trump. There are no corroborating witnesses, as President Trump alluded to. There is not confirmatory DNA. No police report was filed at the time of this alleged incident. She was unable to identify when this incident occurred until quite recently. No surveillance evidence or witnesses have ever uh, been found or come forward confirming any aspect of E. Jean Carroll's story. In light of that, in light of the utter implausibility of the story that E. Jean Carroll was attempting to sell to the jury in this case, her attorneys introduced evidence that should have never seen the inside of a courtroom. Utterly uh, in, insane uh, efforts to introduce propensity witnesses, Jessica Leeds and Natasha Stoinoff, uh, most notably, in an unfair and improper effort to buttress E. Jean Carroll's failed attempt uh, to assault President Trump. Uh, Jessica Leeds' story is instructive here. This is a woman who claims uh, that in the middle of a crowded airliner in 1979, uh, President Trump assaulted her. Leeds has never been able to identify where this plane departed from, where it went to, uh, the date of the flight in question, uh, making our efforts to disprove her testimony uh, extremely difficult. Under the federal rules of evidence, uh, this story should have never been allowed to be presented uh, to the jury in this case. The same is true of Natasha Stoinoff's story, which again lacks any indicia of reliability, uh, any sort of credibility, any sort of uh, confirmatory uh, testimony from other witnesses, uh, or any, anything else that would make you believe that this actually happened. So on the one hand, you have a judge who allowed in uh, this improper propensity evidence that should not have been allowed in. In our view, that polluted the jury's deliberations in this case, that presented a story to the jury uh, of a series of a pattern of conduct that the jury should, uh, should not have been considering. Uh, and we think that absent that propensity evidence, no fair jury could have reached the verdict that was reached in this case. And as a result, we believe uh, that this verdict needs to be overturned. But there's more than that. In addition to this improper propensity evidence, President Trump and his trial team were prevented from cross-examining E. Jean Carroll and other witnesses on crucial issues, crucial issues in particular relating uh, to political coordination and the political motivation behind this entire lawsuit. This is a lawsuit that was instigated in large part by George Conway, a longtime political foe and adversary of President Trump. This is a lawsuit that was funded by Reid Hoffman, a key political ally of the Biden-Harris administration and a major Democrat donor. We were limited in the evidence we were allowed to present at trial about these crucial facts. We were prevented from cross-examining E. Jean Carroll on aspects of that, that dynamic that underlies this entire lawsuit. And that, too, unfairly corrupted the jury's deliberations in this case and requires reversal of the jury verdict. I think this political coordination point is particularly important, though. It's important to emphasize, because what, what we have seen in the last few years is a weaponization by the Biden administration and by their political allies of our legal system and of our courts to unlawfully, unconstitutionally interfere with President Trump's core First Amendment right to run for president. That is a right guaranteed to him by the Constitution. That is the right that his political opponents are attempting to strip away from him. We have seen this in case after case after case where unfair political motives uh, have underlay what should be ser excuse me, serious legal proceedings. And I think when you look at this situation in TOTA, when you look at what the left, when you look at what the Biden-Harris administration is attempting to do to President Trump, this is insane. This is an absolute abuse of our legal system. It's an absolute abuse of the rule of law. It should be deeply offensive, not just to political supporters of President Trump, uh, but to each and every American. With respect to today's appeal, we are hopeful that the Second Circuit understands what's at stake here. We, we are hopeful that the Second Circuit uh, understands what occurred during this trial, which was an improper use of evidence to buttress E. Jean Carroll's entirely meritless claims on the one hand, 
and an improper exclusion of evidence that would have informed the jury about the true motivation behind this lawsuit and that we believe would have resulted in a very different verdict. Thank you.